Okay, in this video I'm going to test a CFA model using the Amos program. The data is coming from the 2018 college football season. I basically got uh, various team performance indicators from a sports betting website, which I'm not really a better, but you can obviously get a lot of information uh, on team performance from uh, uh, you know various sites. So the data is actually contained in this SPSS uh, file. So I have uh, basically a variable reflecting team and then I've got various performance indicators both offensive, defensive, and general team performance. So the model is going to look like this and it's essentially a two-factor model uh, where we are uh, where we have offensive proficiency uh, being uh, one of the latent factors and then defensive proficiency being the others. So uh, we have average team passer rating, quarterback sack per game, third down conversion uh, percentage and rushing yards per game all serving as indicators of offensive proficiency, sacks per game by defense, opponent third down conversion percentage, takeaways per game, and opponent yards per game uh, being uh, serving as indicators of defensive proficiency. I've added in a covariance between offensive and defensive proficiency uh, factors and then also added in a covariance between the errors uh, for average team passer rating and rushing yards per game and between uh, the opponent yards per game and opponent third down conversion percentage. So we've also set uh, one we've actually fixed one of the um, factor loadings to one for each of the latent variables in order to scale to set the measurement scale for those factors so we have average team passer rating serving as the reference variable uh, in relation to offensive proficiency and opponent yards per game serving as the reference variable for defensive proficiency so um, just kind of really quickly before we actually get into the uh, an, the actual analysis. I'll show you how this was drawn up. Uh, basically, I just went to File New, created uh, sort of an open canvas, and uh, typically I like to have a little bit more drawing space to work from, so I'm going to click on View Interface Properties, Paper Size, go, I'm going to go to Landscape Legal and click on Apply so I have a little bit more drawing space to work from. Next, I'm going to go ahead and import the data, uh, so I'm going to click on Select Data Files, uh, file name and then click the data uh, file that I'm working from and uh, open and so now you can see the file name and the um, and the sample size. Uh, just so you know I will uh, have this uh, data file available to you for download uh, under the video description at YouTube. So next we'll click on OK and uh, we'll go ahead and draw out the model. So I'm going to start by uh, drawing my observed variables clicking on the rectangle and uh, drawing out an observed variable here. Um, just to get for in the interest of expediency, I'm also going to go ahead and click on add a unique variable to the existing variable and then uh, click this around as well. So now I've set up an indicator variable and its associated error. And so now what I can do is I can select all objects, click on my little uh, copier machine, and then I can drag these down. So there's one, two, three, four, one, two, three, and four right here. I'm going to deselect all objects, click on the oval, uh, which is going to be the factor, and then draw that out. And I can use my little copy machine and draw out uh, the second one. So next what I'll do is I'm going to go ahead and click on uh, the uh, single-headed arrows so I can draw out um, the uh, relationships between uh, each of the latent factors and their respective indicators, which I haven't quite set up yet, but this is what it's going to look like. And then I can use the double-headed arrow to draw in the covariances. So there'll be a covariance here. Uh, there will also be a covariance right here, and then a covariance here as well. Uh, next, I'm going to go ahead and click on List Variables and Data Set, and I'll draw. I'll, I'll drag the uh, variables over into the indicator boxes. So average team pass rating is going to go right here. Quarterback sack per game uh, is going to be uh, going right here. Third down conversion percentage will go right here. Um, rushing yards per game will go right here. Then we have sacks per game. Uh, opponent third down conversion percentage right there. Takeaways per game, so I will move, uh, so there it is right there. And then opponent yards per game, which will go right here. So um, 
obviously it's not very clean and I'll kind of clean that up just uh, uh, shortly but next what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and click on uh, right click on the first path for uh, average uh, pass rating uh, click on object properties and I'm going to set that regression weight to 1 and then I'm also going to do the same thing I'm going to just click on this little um, arrow uh, for opponent yards per game and set that uh, regression weight to 1 as well so I fixed those two factor loadings to 1 next I'm going to right click on the latent variable um, and uh, object properties and go to text and now I can assign a name so for this one I'll just type in uh, offense um, or offense and uh, for variable label I can actually include spaces and in various symbols here so I'm actually just going to type in offensive proficiency um, and I can actually you know, move this down here and I can change the font size as well so I'm going to go and change that to 12 and then we'll do the same thing for defensive so in this case I'm going to call this low uh, defensive proficiency. Uh, for font size, we'll go back. And I'll say a 12 right there. For each of the error terms, I'm going to click on them. And for variable name, I'm going to type in E1 right there, E2, E3, E4, E5, E6, E7, and E8 right there so now I can kind of clean up the rest of it so I'm going to click on uh, this box right here for the average passer rating and you can see it's a very long name even if I try to change the font name it's still going to um, drag off so if I go under variable label I can give it a name so I can uh, just say average um, team passer rating and then I can do the same thing uh, right here I can change the font size again I'll change it to uh, 12. And variable label, I can uh, uh, type in quarter, quarter, back, sacked per game. And you can see it's kind of dragging off. But basically, I can keep doing each of those uh, for each of the variables and kind of changing those up. So I'm not going to really run the analysis from this. This is just to kind of show you how the, 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 um, the uh, previous um, diagram was was drawn up so I'm going to go back to the original <clears throat> which is the CFA corrected model right here and this is what it's going to look like so now I'm basically ready to run the analysis so if I click on analysis properties um, there I, I believe there are there is missing data on some of the variables so I have to click on estimate means and intercepts uh, if I don't have that clicked and, and I have missing data on any of the variables that's included in my in my analysis then I'm going to get an error message so uh, that's why that's clicked under output I've clicked on standardized estimates squared multiple correlations so next um, also I need to make sure that the data file is in there so there it is. Uh, that's actually um, um, the other file but uh, I can change that and move it to uh, this file name right here open and OK and I will save it and then run it so I'll click on calculate estimates and there you go so now when I click on um, oh and by the way I'm not sure that yeah I've already kind of shown you that so if I click on right click or click on the uh, view output path diagram you can see that we have all our coefficients and right now these are the unstandardized estimates that are being reflected if I want the standardized estimates I can click on this so within the unstandardized estimates you'll notice that uh, the uh, factor loadings that are fixed to one those are not estimated so those are still fixed and then all of the remaining uh, loadings are estimated and so these are kind of rounded off right here uh, to zero this would be the covariance uh, between the two factors this would be the variance for offensive proficiency variance for defensive proficiency um, you know you'll notice that uh, the means are zero for those latent factors then we have the means of zero and then the variance is for each of the error terms as well there's the covariance right here and here and, and so forth. Uh, if I click on standardized estimates you can see that now we have the correlation between the two latent factors and you'll see uh, standardized estimates for all of the loadings in this case um, and then 
right above you see that these are basically the R squared values reflecting the proportion of variance accounted for uh, in each of the indicator variables by their respective latent factors. Um, just kind of note too that if you don't want certain um, um, uh, indices to show up, uh, we can actually right click, go to object properties, if you go to visibility and click on um, the show parameters button right here you can see it goes away. So you can you know modify this as you as you need to. So now let's go and look at the view text and we'll look at our general output. We'll go under model fit and you can see that under model fit we have our chi-square uh, goodness of fit test. You can see that it is statistically significant which um, you know uh, conventionally uh, statistical significance for the chi-square goodness of fit test indicates uh, poor fit. Uh, just keep in mind that this test is impacted by sample size and it tends to be de-emphasized nowadays um, and more descriptive indices are referenced um, are, are more commonly referenced but you still want to report on that test uh, both the chi-square value degrees of freedom and the significance level uh, in any report you'll see that we have the chi-square uh, degrees of freedom ratio right here values that are closer to one are indicating better fit values up to about four or five would be considered um, you know, kind of quote unquote acceptable. Um, and so you, you can see right here we have some evidence of, of, of uh, reasonable fit uh, here. The CFI and the TLI, what we have right here are um, these values. Generally speaking, values that are 0.95 or above for these would be considered you know, more evidence of, of closer fit. Values uh, 0.90 or above are typically considered you know, kind of acceptable fit. When we look at the RMSEA right here, uh, we have a uh, value of 0 0.073. This would be uh, kind of acceptable fit. Basically values up to about 0 0.05 would be considered um, close fit and values between say 0 0.06 and 0 0.08 would be considered um, you know, acceptable. So this is still acceptable. CFI looks pretty good. TLI is acceptable. Uh, the P-close test, this is just a test of, you know, how close of a fit the model is or to, to what is conventionally viewed as um, a close fitting model. So if this is non-significant, then that would be indication that we have evidence of a close fitting model. And that seems to be the case right here. When we click on uh, estimates, you can see that we have the unstandardized estimates of uh, those two uh, loadings that are fixed to one. There are no test results for those. So we, we can't really do anything with that, but we can look at the coefficients for the, the remaining uh, indicator variables and we have statistical significance uh, or test for statistical significance for each of those uh, parameters within the model. Um, so you'll notice that for defensive proficiency we have opponent third down uh, conversion percentage right here and you can see there's a positive relationship that's statistically significant uh, defensive proficiency uh, takeaways, there's a negative coefficient here, it's statistically significant. Um, and then you can see also down here defensive proficiency, sacks per game, that's a negative coefficient and that's statistically significant. So, um, you know, given that uh, this coefficient is, you know, is positive right here for opponent third down conversion percentage and you see within the, um, our figure, uh, again, there's the unstandardized estimates. Uh, that's the reason why I'm actually calling this low defensive proficiency. And so that's, you know, sacks per game. Obviously, more sacks uh, translates into greater proficiency. But given that this is a negative coefficient, I'm treating this as low defensive proficiency. So um, at any rate, going back, you can see for the uh, offensive proficiency, you can see that, um, you know, third down conversion percentage, there's a positive uh, uh, relationship uh, with the factor and you, uh, with the third down conversion percentage and the late factor so it's significant we have rushing yards per game um, you know that's a significant positive uh, loading as well and then quarterback being sacked would is negatively related to offensive proficiency and that's significant so you can see that being sacked more often would be associated with less uh, proficiency when you look at the standardized regression weights these are basically the standardized factor loadings and um, so you have all those coefficients right there all of these are looking uh, pretty pretty uh, substantial when we scroll down, we can see that we have uh, the correlation between offensive and defensive proficiency. 
there's actually a negative relationship between those two latent factors. You can see that uh, the test of the covariance um, uh, between those two factors is statistically significant. So there is a significant relationship between offensive and defensive proficiency and evidently it is a negative relationship. When we look at the correlated uh, uh, uniquenesses or the correlated errors uh, between E1 and E4, there's a negative uh, relationship um, and it's statistically significant. The uh, Pearson correlation between those is negative 0.304. When we look at E6 and E8, there's um, you know, the, the coefficient, the covariance is positive. There's our co correlation, it's uh, positive as, obviously as well, uh, but the relationship is non-significant. Then when we sc scroll down uh, and we look at the um, squared multiple correlations, you can see that all of these estimates are, are quite good. Uh, the weakest one is the takeaways per game. So basically, um, the you can say that the defensive factor accounts for about 9% of the variance in takeaways uh, per game. So it's not a whole lot, but you can see that the offensive and defensive uh, factors respectively are having, um, are really strongly related um, to each of the indicator variables and accounting for substantial variation. Um, you can see that, uh, again, if we go back and we think about the offensive proficiency factor is being related to uh, the um, uh, SACS uh, the uh, quarterback sacked per game, you can see the offensive uh, factor is accounting for about 37.5% of the variance in that. The offensive factor is accounting for about 54% uh, of the variance in average team passer ratings. You can see the defensive factor is accounting for about 53.1% uh, of the variance in sacks per game. And again, if we go back and we look uh, in this, um, in our diagram, go to standardized estimates, you can see, uh, again, there's the R-square values that are given. So sacks per game, 53% um, of the variance is accounted for by defensive proficiency, 79% uh, of the variance accounted for um, in opponent third down conversion percentage by defensive proficiency, and so forth. There's the takeaways with low uh, variance accounted for in this by defensive proficiency. So um, anyway, that kind of summarizes the overall model. And uh, this, that concludes this demonstration.